So Vipers has uh, suggested this paper um, from a, a researcher, Masahiro Morioka, which we've read before and enjoyed their work. This is in the Review of Life Studies. Can artificial intelligence philosophize? This is just a short little uh, thing. But here we go. <clears throat> yeah, so you think it's the Review of Life Studies is just this guy's site with occasional guests. Yeah, but I mean, that's okay because it seems like he's a competent dude. So it's like competent dude and a competent dude's friend. Or I don't even know if it's a guy. I think it is a guy. Um, but a competent person and a competent person's friends is, you know, worth reading. So... You can just think of it as like a curated journal. Okay, so here we go. Artificial intelligence AI has made remarkable progress. In the world of Go and Shogi, Japanese chess, humans are no longer able to beat AI. This wave will spread even further. Academics are no exception. There is a possibility that AI will replace the research that scholars have been doing. Especially in the case of philosophy, which I specialize in, thinking itself is the entirety of its work, so philosophy might suffer the same fate as Go and Shogi. Let's think further about this point. First, discovering the thought patterns of past philosophers is what AI is most adept at. For example, it will be possible to let an AI read the complete works of philosopher Kant, discover Kant-like thought patterns from them, and use them to create an application called Artificial Intelligence Kant. I predict that the job of future Kant researchers will be to ask various questions to the artificial intelligence Kant and analyze the answers it produces. In this area, a happy collaboration between AI and philosophers can be established. You know, I think this guy's on point. This is kind of how um, chess works right now. Even though chess, like, uh, like uh, not Japanese chess, but like Western, uh, like not Western, um, regular chess, people study the... AIs for ideas and then they react to them and then the AI gets better when we react to it but like this is like the sort of thing it can do um, Brian Random Name says it would seem like the question is can imaginative thought emerge from the creation of new combinations of material we feed AI if so then it should be able to philosophize yeah, I think that's where this is going to be going like will it really be a Kantian thought not just some sort of rehashing the same old Kant in just sort of like clever new uh, clothes. Like, is it just window dressing on Kant, like just rehashing the same words, or is it actually some sort of creative work uh, in the image of Kant, but not just uh, just putting new clothes on the same old philosophy? Um, all right, so next, let AI read all the texts of past philosophers and extract as many philosophical thought patterns as possible from them. The result will be an array of philosophical thought patterns that humans are capable of thinking about. <clears throat> uh, the Go AI doesn't rehash? Yeah, I don't... Well, I mean, I don't think the Chess AI rehashes either. But that's the question. Like, what does it do? Um, what would it do with the Kantian corpus? Okay. Okay, so the first one did, but then they had the next one learn from the ground up just playing against itself. Yeah, see, that's interesting, but that's but we can't do that here. Like, if you want it to learn philosophy, it has to learn all the philosophy. If you have to have it playing against itself, we're not going to be able to understand the philosophy that it talks about because it's only going to be, it will never have anything we understand. And we were talking about this earlier. Um, something that only talks to itself, we're not going to be able to understand it. And we need to be able to understand it for it to be of any worth to us. Like, we have to be able to understand what the AI is talking about in terms of philosophy. If it's just talking to itself, we will never understand it because it has to be able to communicate to us in a way we can understand. And so it's not the same position as, like, one of these games which can be mathematically uh, represented because that's not the same thing as what we understand from the uh, philosophy. Uh, Frank says, to train an AI like AlphaGo on Kant, you would need to have something that rates its success in sounding like Kant. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like, you need, that's exactly right. You need to train it on Kant and then have someone, you know, do some sort of feedback on it and, like, how Kantian does this actually sound. And then maybe once you under, once you get it to a certain, like, threshold, like, okay, it is now Kantian sounding, um, then you can actually uh, say, well, what's a new thought? And then is this actually worth something or is it just not Kantian anymore? But like maybe at that point, it, the ideas that it's outputting are interesting to us. But like if it's not going to be interesting to us, why would anyone bother listening to AI Kant? <coughs> but yeah, that's what you, but you're training it. 
And that's the question. You're not doing something from uh, ex nihilo. We're not just giving it like from nothing, because we wouldn't be it wouldn't be any use to us. I mean, if it somehow like learned English, German, or some language, and then decided to talk to us, that'd be different. But that you might as well like do six machina, like you know, finger of God comes down, lightning strikes it, and makes it intelligent. But I mean, that's just a uh, you know, might as well be a fantasy book at that point. Okay. Yeah, the result would be an array of philosophical thought patterns that humans are capable of thinking about. However, there must be many philosophical thought patterns that were overlooked by philosophers of the past, so let AI discover such unknown thought patterns as well. <clears throat> the result would be an almost complete list of philosophical thought patterns that humans are capable of thinking about. Once this is accomplished, humans are no more able to, th to create further original philosophical thought patterns. The work of philosophers in the future will be will become closer to a kind of computer science that studies the behavior of philosophical AI. However, yeah, see, at that point, it'd be like, okay, it has, this has come up with all the ideas, and so all it would be would be doing research on that philosophical AI. That's kind of funny. It'd be very sad, actually. Okay. Frank says, I think it would give us some interesting thoughts, but mostly gibberish that assures us are really, really Kantian. See, yeah, that's what it would be. Would it really be interesting or would it just be gibberish that we are then picking out what we find to be interesting? And is it really thinking Kantian, uh, thinking deep Kantian thoughts, or is it just getting close enough that we are sort of uh, in, like putting our own ideas onto what it's uh, onto its output? Mm. Are we reading more into it? There was a um, court case many years ago now, because I think I heard about it when I was in college, where a lady, it was on fucking, like, Law and Order or something, where uh, someone was brain dead, but, like, their body was still alive, and so, like, someone was saying, oh, no, they're intelligent, and so, and they would move their hand around and said, well, I have trained very hard to understand the very slight move, uh, the very slight feedback to understand what their hand was. And they were like typing out responses on the, the like a keyboard or something. And they were putting everything into it. Cause the guy, as soon as they, the person like was told to do something and then they came back and like the person was put out into like a different room. And then the brain dead person was shown some stuff. The person, when they came back would just get the answers wrong. So basically they were talking to themselves, but they were putting all their own thoughts onto something that they thought was, uh, inter like had intelligence, but never really did or did not have any anymore. And uh person was, you know, brain dead. But yeah, it was a weird story. Anywho, okay. However, a fundamental question arises here. Is this philosophical AI performing the true work of philosophy? If all it does is to discover undiscovered patterns in externally input data or to provide solutions to questions set by humans, it cannot be called philosophy. In the first place, philosophy begins with intrinsically and spontaneously posing philosophical questions that are essential to oneself. Questions like, why do I exist? Or, what is the meaning of life? Are examples of such philosophical questions. They are so urgently pressing upon us that we are going to be, pu going to be pushed to the point where we are forced to seriously think about them. This is one of the starting points of true philosophy. Will AI ever spontaneously pose such compelling philosophical questions? I predict that this will not happen for the time being. <clears throat> and Brian Randomness says, There is a real thing, facilitated communication used on those with cognitive developmental disabilities that is completely fake. Yeah, I think that's right. That's what um, that old story was, facilitated communication. Frank Big Time says, and I phrase that unfairly because the gibberish would be very, very Kantian across many dimensions we just aren't interested in. Yeah, that's the thing. It would all sound very Kantian, but would there be any deep questions um, that are generated because they thought they were deep? And that's what the uh, author is asking here. Would any of the questions that are generated actually be uh, generated because they were thought to be deep, not just because they were... Uh, things that we've missed in the structure of how we've asked our questions in the past. If we're just finding structural empty spots, lacuna, um, are they really deep questions or are they just empty spots? And maybe there's a good reason we skipped over them because they're just not that interesting. All right. 
author asks, however, if AI were to intrinsically and spontaneously pose philosophical questions of great urgency to itself without any human input and then begin to think about them con continuously, I would then be inclined to judge that it is actually ph philosophizing and that it has properly reached the human dimension. Philosophically speaking, it has long been believed that the autonomous autonomous activity based on free will and the ability and the thinking ability that enables us to discover universal laws and truths are the hallmark hallmarks of the human species however they will probably be conquered by future ai okay so they say if you can come up with these things on your own because you find them necessary then it will be like humans Author says, I would like to think that in order for AI to reach the human dimension, it will need, in addition, the intrinsic and spontaneous philosophical ability we have discussed above. The evolution of AI is now forcing us to rethink our view of intelligence itself. Of course, AI's intrinsic philosophical questions are so strange that they may not resonate with our minds at all. In such a case, if a dialogue between humans and AI could happen over this point, it would surely open up a new dimension to philosophy. Frank Big Time says, maybe if you asked it what Kant would say if he realized he was an AI trained on Kant's writing to sound like Kant. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Neo says, this is a prime example of what I was talking about. Neural nets create abstractions by finding patterns and inputs. Then it creates yet deeper abstractions among abstractions. Given philosophy is creating deepest abstractions, we already have some idea how this would work from an engineering perspective. Uh, we don't have to... Uh, Turing test and AI to know if it's capable of creating reasonable answers. Yeah, that's right. And this author is saying we can do that stuff, but we need for it to first, the more important question the author is saying is like, because what you just said is right, that we can get an AI to do this sort of neural net activity. They're saying now we've moved the goalposts. What it is to be more human is to spontaneously need to ask certain questions, not just to find the like abstractions we've missed um so finding the abstractions we've missed maybe an ai can do that um but for it to need to answer to ask and answer certain questions maybe it cannot yet do that um and that would be the next level according to this author yeah so interesting yeah so this was reprinted in Resonating Words, a government-approved literature textbook for junior high school third graders. Published by Kyoku Shippan in Japan 2021. Uh, I don't know what a junior high school third grader is. That's interesting, though. Yeah, so why... Like, is there something about questioning that is more fundamental than getting thought patterns? I don't know. Maybe this author is right. Like maybe it is the drive as uh, Vipers was talking about. What is it to want earlier? Maybe that's what's more uh, where our intelligence lies. And this is a Nietzschean point of view. Like I was saying, Nietzsche said, you know, will to power. That's a drive. A fundamental thing about us is that we want to be bigger, be better, be something new. And maybe that's what it is. And none of these sort of neural nets, they just run. They're not attempting to be something that they're not. Frank says, I think posing urgent philosophical questions and thinking about them continually is a much higher bar than we require humans to reach. Yeah, that's fair. Most humans don't bother doing any of that. <laughs> um, so, yes, that's a very high bar. And so maybe that's a good criticism against this author saying a lot of people don't do this. And so you saying that this is what computers have to do is an unfair bar uh unfair requirement for artificial intelligence although i mean i know a bunch of idiots i'm sure you all know a bunch of idiots um even the idiots think about like they may not think about philosophy questions but they have asked them like what is the meaning of life they don't think about it for very long but um they do ask these questions sometimes <laughs> vipers I know. I'm sorry, Vipers. Yeah. Brian Rand name. Yeah, a lot of people are n not chess grandmasters. I know how to play chess. I am not any good at chess. Um, I do take a uh, request cryonics, but I am probably not going to take... Like, if it depends on how long it is. Like, if it's just a few pages, I'll take a look at it. But I haven't been streaming very much, and so I'm going to getting back into streaming. But my voice is already starting to go. I don't know if you can hear it. 
Um, so I can't really keep this up for too much longer. But yeah, uh, if you want to send something over, I'll take a look and maybe save it for next time, if you want. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, it's questions. Cool. All right, cool, cryonics. <coughs> yeah. So... Um, yes. Well, so what have we learned today? Um, two different perspectives. The previous paper was asking, can we break down uh, intelligence into sort of how we interact with the world through our senses? And then this one is asking, it says we need to give uh, computers a drive or a want to be able to ask questions of the world to ask hard questions and then th we can talk about it because we can already think about artificial intelligence being able via neural, neural nets or whatnot to uh, already be able to get philosophical thought patterns but just having the thought pattern isn't enough to be doing philosophy to be doing philosophy you have to want to ask these questions and find answers to these hard questions Okay. Yeah. So. Cool. 